Hey everyone, welcome back to Buick Outdoors. If you're new around here, my name is Sheldon Marion, and today, seeing how we have some absolutely beautiful weather, I'm taking the dogs out to one of our new camping spots where we're going to be spending the night under the stars. You know, one thing that's nice about uh, having a little camping spot like this, the roads right here, we're able to pack up the truck, bring in a pile of gear. I mean, you could bring a king size bed in here if you really wanted to. But, you know, I got a nice little tripod for cooking on. I brought a cot for myself. And I'm also going to be uh, spoiling the dogs quite a bit. I brought a cot for them and a blanket for them as well. Hey, buddy. Hey, you happy? Yeah, sir, buddy. There's old Daisy. So, like I said, I got a, a cot for myself and my sleeping bag. I got a cot for the dogs so they don't got to sleep on the ground and a uh, nice little blanket for them. Basically, you're going to be just kind of hanging out. It's just beautiful weather right now. I think it's kind of plus six or so. But uh, yeah, I'm just slowly packing everything into our little camping spot there, getting everything all set up. Uh, later on tonight, and we'll be cooking some supper. And basically, just hanging out, enjoying the weather, and uh, man, just waiting, waiting for spring, basically. So, seeing how we have some of this spring-like weather, might as well get outside and enjoy it, guys. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep packing my stuff in there, and we'll see you in there. Alrighty, you guys. Well, I pretty well got everything packed in here now that I need. Uh, I got my two cots here, one for me, one for the dogs. I got my axe, little lunch kit, chair, camera. I have a new A-frame uh, cooking tripod and the grill over there hanging up in the tree. Uh, this, this tripod here, I'm going to be doing a gear review on it. So if you want to check out that video, I'll put a little link uh, at the end of this video. But anyways, now that we got everything packed in here, I think what I'm going to be doing is setting up our cots. So I'll probably put one right here. I'll put mine here. I'll put the dogs beside me, and that way, middle of the night, if it gets cold, I can just get the fire going real quick. Then maybe after getting the cots set up, I'll run around here, and I'll get some firewood all collected. You can see in behind me here, there is a ton of of uh, deadfall laying around so i can easily break it up i brought my axe so i can cut it up with the axe too worst case scenario i got the chainsaw on the truck so uh yeah we better get to it start setting up these cots
good spot for the dogs. So we got dog's bed set up, my bed set up. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a good night. It's gonna be awesome. So anytime you're out in the bush and you're surrounded by spruce trees, you'll come across these branches a lot. So they're just kind of the lower branches on these spruce. And a lot of times, uh, you'll find just a pile of these dead branches. It doesn't necessarily mean that the tree is dead, but these branches they produce like this uh, old man's beard, witch's hair, whatever you want to call it. It's this green kind of mossy stuff growing. And this stuff creates just excellent, excellent fire starter. So what I'm going to be doing here now is I'm just going to go around and collect a bunch of this stuff so then that way tonight when it's time to light a fire i'll have my fire starter pretty well ready to go uh basically you just strike a match to it or a lighter or a little uh flint and steel to it a little spark and uh yeah man it, it goes up pretty pretty quick and easy uh like these big branches like this they're just all over the place and it's very very easy to uh to break and grab and then two once is the the witch's hair or the old man's beard whatever it is that you want to call it once that's lit up uh, all the branches and stuff that are extremely dry so they go up real quick too and as long as you have a little bit of bigger stuff uh laying around there with you you get a fire going like within minutes like it's just awesome awesome stuff and like i said it's very easy to find and very easy to grab a little flick of the wrist and off she comes you know it takes a couple minutes and you have a bunch of firewood ready to go doesn't take long and it creates an amazing fire to start off with but anyways guys i'm gonna get busy here i'm gonna collect a whole bunch more have a nice big pile for us ready for when we uh go to light up a fire and get to cooking later on what's up buddy have fun don't beat up on Daisy too much. You gotta be nice to her. Gotta be nice to your woman, buddy. There we go. Put that into our pot. There. And within a couple of minutes, we got a bunch. <laughs> we can't get a fire going with this. Boy, we shouldn't be in the woods. Well, there we go. We got all of our 
little sticks and branches, old man's beard and stuff, all piled up. Now we'll head back out here, and we'll start chopping up some of this small deadfall, get it packed over, get that ready, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just be hanging out, <laughs> listening to the ravens. But anyways, better get to it. You gotta get busy, start getting some firewood. Need that for cooking, my friend. So this here is kind of cool as uh, as I'm collecting fire with the dogs. They're running around doing their thing or whatever. But just over here somewhere, it sounds like there's something kind of wheezing at us. Now, oh, it sounds like a deer when they kind of do a snort wheeze. You can hear them, they go, and that's when you, you get in within, you know, their comfort zone kind of thing. But where we are, there's, I'd be very surprised if I seen a deer out here. Uh, so what I'm thinking is that it's one of two things. It's either a raven kind of messing with you. Because ravens, they do do a bunch of vocalizations and stuff. And they're, they're actually a really cool little bird, ravens are. They kind of talk like a parrot. Or it's potentially a lynx. So if there's a lynx, they kind of hiss at you too. Just like a house cat will. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to walk over here with the dogs. And I'm going to see if we can see it. <laughs> no sense in being out in the bush if you don't get uh, to have cool little interactions and stuff like that, you know. But the dogs are running around they're sniffing a bunch of stuff uh there is cats in here uh because there's quite a few rabbits kicking around and lynx just absolutely love rabbit and uh yeah this part of the world too there's lots of lynx martin uh the odd fisher the squirrels and stuff like that around here too but uh i don't know Maybe we'll walk around here for a bit, waste some time, see if we can see anything. Other than a pile of poop. <laughs> I think that might have been dog poop. But uh, yeah, if we run into anything, I'll let you know. If we don't see anything, I'll let you know too. Anyways, we're gonna keep, keep walking. The dogs are sniffing at something over here. So we'll see, maybe that's a squirrel cache. See, there's squirrel tracks here. They're old and they're snowed in, but... 
let's see. Yeah, squirrel cash. So the squirrels, they burrow underneath the ground and all that good stuff. They have little tunnels and stuff. But, uh, yeah. I think we'll keep walking. See what we can see. In a little bit, we'll make our way back to the campsite. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Well, one thing I wanted to show you guys here as we're making our way back to camp is I seen this growing on the tree. Now, if you're new to the woods, you might think that this is chaga and it looks very, very similar. It has that black, dark outside case. You can see on the inside there, it is slightly brown, but this is not a birch tree. So this is one of those things where all this is, is just a chunk of, kind of wood burl kind of a thing growing off the side it's almost like a tree wart kind of a thing but this is not birch uh this isn't chaga so if you guys want to see what chaga is i do have a video on chaga uh what i can do is i'll put a link in the description below for you also at the end of the video i'll put it in one of the boxes uh so you can check it out there too because i'm sure if you took this chipped it off and tried making a tea with it. Uh, I don't think you'd have a good day. I don't think it would hurt you, but it uh, wouldn't taste that good, I don't think. But anyways, guys, I just want to throw that little tidbit of info into you. Uh, yeah, so if you want to look for chaga, you got to find it on the trees that actually hold chaga, which is a birch. This, not a birch. <laughs> Well, we made her back to camp. Uh, we were walking around out there looking to see if we could find what was making all that ruckus and noise, but ah, we couldn't find nothing. I'm pretty sure that was just a raven. Uh, but anyways, you know, something like this, I think more people uh, need to do this. Uh, not necessarily come out and, and camp out overnight or have a fire. Just, you know, do what I'm doing right now. Just bring a lawn chair out, bring your dogs, bring a book whatever and just sit here and you know just enjoy nature enjoy the peace and quiet other than a compressor station that's a couple kilometers away that you can kind of hear a slight little humming noise other than that you know there's there's nothing out here it's just peace and quiet you know i'm sitting here i got my dogs with me we have the cots all set up. And other than that, you know, we're just relaxing, de-stressing, forgetting about the world. You got the phone turned off. You know, there's no there's no background noise, there's no traffic, there's no lights, there's no sirens. The odd plane might fly overhead, and other than that, you know, you have the birds and the squirrels and ravens, I don't know, maybe a lynx, like you know, it's, it's peaceful. And again, like, just listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see how nice that is? You hear the dog kind of sniffing himself and licking and stuff. But other than that, you know, it's just, it's amazing what doing this, you know, what it'll do for you. If you come out here, you just sit back, relax, and for once, enjoy doing nothing. You know, as crazy as that seems to some people, because you're always so busy on the go doing something your anxiety is just through the roof your stress level is you know it's almost giving you a heart attack every day just come out here and just listen to nothing for once you know maybe build a little fire just enjoy the crackling of a fire sit back relax lay down on the dirt lay in the moss you know just get out of the city limits, get away from the hustle and bustle of everything and just 
come out here and do nothing. You know, it sounds weird and crazy to a lot of people, uh, but for the people that actually do this, you know, there's there's something special about just going outside. You know, it's to me, it's it's an everyday thing, but I know there's a lot of people that for the last 10 years haven't been outside the city limits and uh you know you can go to the park and the dog park and and stuff like that but you know it's nothing like coming out here sitting in a lawn chair and just looking up you know and at night it's even crazier tonight i believe we have a full moon if it stays this clear out it's going to be a full moon the stars will be out. You'll be able to see everything around you just with the moonlight. And it's just a phenomenal thing just to lay down or sit in a chair and just... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. There's really no way to describe it. It's something that you feel. And uh, I think this day and age, not enough people feel that. You know what I mean? So do yourself a favor, come out to a place like this. You know, if it takes you an hour or two to drive to a place where there actually isn't anybody, trust me when I tell you this, it is worth the drive. Just go outside, be by yourself for once, even if it's only for an hour, just take a breath of fresh air and uh, just de-stress and relax a little bit. You know, everybody's so strung out these days anxieties through the roof everybody's stressed out just when you're when you come out here turn your phone off put it on silent leave it in the pickup leave it in your car van whatever it is that you drive and just enjoy this and again this is what you enjoy Oh, well, we might as well start getting some of this firewood ready to go. Slowly starting to get a little late. So we might as well get some of these bigger trees broke up. It's always a good idea to use two trees like that. They're nice and close together. And that way, you take trees like this. You can safely break them up. Some are a little bit harder than others. Some are pretty easy. This one here I think is pretty well almost rotten. So this will probably break right away. And yeah, not bad. Now yeah, that piece will leave. Now a lot of this stuff you could just break it over your knee kind of a thing but when you're out in the bush you kind of want to take the safer route then this way too you don't have to swing your axe a bunch you can save your axe when you really need it and it makes pretty quick work of it. Uh, this smaller stuff, you can break this over your knee. There ain't nothing.
little few over here. Cause me some grief. Alrighty, last one. Big branches. There. So now we got ourselves a pretty good pile of wood. We have our fire starter there. Big pile of wood here. And this here is a mushroom I found on our little walk. These things, they grow on the side of dead trees and supposedly they're really good for smoldering at night and they keep your fire going. So tonight I'm gonna experiment with that. Before going to bed, I'm gonna take this, toss it on the fire and uh, see what it looks like in the morning. But, We'll worry about that later. I think now what we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll probably just run over to the truck here real quick. I got the dog's food and dishes over there. So we'll let those guys eat and then we'll come back. Sun's starting to slowly go down. The trees are gonna kind of suck up that sun here real soon. So maybe we'll get a fire going and uh, get cooking up our, our supper here tonight. Alrighty. Let's get to it. Alrighty, well, sun is slowly starting to set here now. So I think it's about time we get our fire going and start cooking up our supper. Uh, we got all these branches and stuff that we collected earlier. Just gotta bust some of these up and then we'll get our fire going. And with these, it really doesn't take a whole lot to get a real good fire going. But the more you have, the better your chances are of getting your fire going the first time. There we go, use about that much. Here we have it. I want to make this fire so it's pretty well in the center of our uh, pan there. I can move this over a little bit too. Looks about right. 
uh, once we uh, get this fire going here, I kind of want to get the grill nice and hot. That way it burns off any uh, any oils or anything like that from the manufacturing process. Uh, if not, you might have uh, some pretty nasty tasting uh, food. Right now it's kind of wanting to sink down, but that's right. As soon as we put uh, any kind of weight and food on there, it'll keep it up. When you're cooking over fire too, what you want is a nice little bed of coals. You don't want a whole bunch of flame and stuff like that. What you'll end up doing is if there's any any kind of oils or anything like that in your wood, you'll end up turning your food kind of a weird black color, like a soot almost. Uh, and that's basically what it is. is like the saps and oils and stuff are uh, they don't quite burn off all the way, and then they end up sticking to your food and uh, it gives it a slight little bit of an off taste so for me i like to have get a nice little fire going like this and then once you have a good little bed of coals you drop this right down close and uh, you just cook off your coals then that way too it's more of like a charcoal taste to it uh, instead of a sappy kind of it's an off taste and it's it's not that good There we go. Now that we have kind of a more controllable fire, put this down uh, about there. If you get this metal a little too hot, what will happen is you'll warp it. And if you warp it, it's pretty hard to get it back to its original state. So here we'll just kind of let that slowly cook off any of the oils or anything like that that's on there. And uh, yeah, once we get this not glowing red hot or anything crazy like that, but uh, pretty well just kind of cook it for a little while, burn off whatever's there, 
then we'll move on and we'll uh, we'll start cooking. Alrighty, so now that we have our fire pretty well burnt down to coals here, I let this get nice and hot. I'm gonna lower this down so we're, I don't know, maybe six inches above the coals. And then uh, we'll tie into the lunch kit here and I'll show you what we're cooking. Uh, about there, I guess. Grab our pin. Put that in. Perfect. Now, what are we cooking today, you say? Well, today we have a couple of things. So, for dessert, we got some mango and pineapple. For the main dish, I have a zucchini that we'll slice up and throw on there. And the star of the show, I have a nice little link of uh, moose sausage. So what we'll do is we'll open this up. And I'm not going to cook all of it. I don't need that much. But I am going to share with the dogs. Grab that. There we go. And then maybe one more. There. Get that on the go. Maybe tomorrow morning I can cook up the rest for breakfast. Now while that's kind of warming up, what I might have to do is put a little bit more uh, wood on there possibly, but we'll see here. Get my zucchini out. One nice thing about cooking out in the bush, you got little scraps and stuff. You know, you don't gotta look far for a composter. There you go. Some lucky squirrel will find that. Get our zucchini on there. And away we go. Now the wood I'm cooking with today is poplar. Uh, it doesn't throw off much for heat when it comes to the coals. But... We can fix that. Hopefully it doesn't get away on us too, too much. If it does, we can always just raise our cooking platform here. Even right there, like it is throwing a bit of heat. More smoke than anything, though. Oh, I don't know if I can break that one. Eh, maybe one more. There we go. So we got the fire going on our here now. And, uh, just want to make sure that it's not getting overly too too hot one good thing about burning uh, poplar is it doesn't give off much for uh, 
but kind of like that sappy black tinge to it and uh, it throws heat but not an extreme amount of heat so it's I mean you can still burn your stuff but uh, not overly too bad one thing that's nice with this tripod uh, if it's a little hot on one side I mean it's it's all chains you can sit here and twist and turn it seems to kind of hold in place for the most part if you had to I guess you could probably take a stick shove it in the ground uh, kind of between a grate or something like that to keep it from spinning but it works pretty good so far so far I'm really impressed with this thing it's it's actually really nice usually what I do is I carry kind of like one of those fold up stoves or not stoves but it's a fold up grill with legs on it and that's not too too bad but for the most part you have one height so you have it's like eight inches is the one the other one's almost a foot off the ground so you can't really adjust it where this you can when you put the grate right on the ground if you really want to or you can pull it up so that grate is geez what is that about three feet off the ground so for that like versatility wise this thing is just wicked awesome well i've been cooking on this for a little bit now uh pretty well just keeping control of the heat by adding more wood not overly too much so it doesn't get away on me so it's time to kind of give everything a flip see how it's all doing so far this thing works just amazing I absolutely love this thing I think you're gonna see this quite a bit uh, if I was using more hardwood that holds the heat a little bit better I think the cooking would be a little bit better but just because right around here there's just a lot of deadfall uh, poplar I'm pretty well just using that and it does throw off you know enough heat to cook but when it comes to the coals uh, it loses the heat real fast but other than just the wood choice uh, this thing is working awesome right now I got flames coming up on the one side I don't want to burn my zucchini so I just turn it and now she's good to go so we're gonna cook a little bit longer easy buddy hold on we're gonna cook this a little bit longer and then uh, we'll be eating here fairly soon alrighty well we've been cooking this for uh, a little while here now I've been taking my time with it pretty well just kind of slow cooking her I have to be honest with you one of the zucchini pieces I already pulled it off and ate it it was uh it was looking pretty good this stuff here mm. oh that's good <laughs> Man, that is some good stuff. Ooh, it kind of hot on the fingers. Oh man, I can't believe how good <laughs> this tastes. No, it's not even all that cold out right now. But something about hot food fresh off the fire. Oh, I can't be beat. I'm really surprised with this zucchini, too. I've tried cooking zucchini at home before. Well, several times. And usually you need, like, a lot of seasoning and stuff, but... I don't know. 
something about out here. Maybe it's just the that smoky flavor or what, but man, that stuff is good. I had to switch seats. The wind kind of shifted on me. It was coming out of the east. Now it's coming out of the north, so right where I have my chair, you can see it's kind of getting pelted with ash and smoke and stuff, but that's all right. Mm. You know, it's not going to be long, a couple more months here, and uh, it's going to be bear season again. One of my all-time favorite times of the year. I always take three weeks off of work, and I disappear out into the bush for three weeks in the holiday trailer with the dogs, and people come out, people do some hunting. So hopefully this year, I'll get two bears. I mainly turn them into uh, smokies and sausages. Uh, but if I can get Shelby to get a bear or two, I'll uh, I'll probably turn her bears into like roast and stuff because a bear roast is just phenomenal as long as you cook it all the way through. Uh, it some of the best meat you'll eat, and uh, I'm not saying that just to kind of pull your leg. Like it is actually really really good meat. Mmm. Come here, Rock. Hey, my buddy. There. Hold on, buddy. It's pretty hot. Hey, you want that? That's pretty good stuff, eh? Not bad for old moose, huh? <laughs> Won't be long and we'll be chewing on some bear sausage. Oh, no, buddy. That's my tongs. Don't be licking those. Hey, you having a good time out here, my friend? You want another piece? There you go. Don't forget your veggies. Here. You gotta get a little piece of this zucchini in you. There you go. Get your vegetables. Hey, hey, hey. You're not supposed to spit that out. <laughs> There you go. When Daisy comes around, we gotta give Daisy some too, okay? Oh, Daisy's here. She heard you munching on sausage. Oh, that one's really hot. Oh, this one. That one's pretty hot too. Mm mm, buddy. Nope. This one's for Daisy. There you go, Daisy. Good girl. Hey, buddy. Boy, we gotta get this fire going. <laughs> oh, jeez. Actually, now what we'll do is we'll take this, raise that way up here. There we go. The pin in it. This little tripod thing, I am very impressed with it. Uh, if you guys want to see the gear review, I just kind of finished that one up. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a gear review on this on the channel here, too. This thing worked just phenomenal. I absolutely love this thing. It's going to be really nice and handy to have uh, come, well, spring, summer, fall, winter. <laughs> I think I'm going to use this thing quite a bit. Even at the house, I think I'll use this a lot, too. Hey, Daisy, buddy. Here. 
Want another piece? There you go. No, no, Rock. You, you already, you already got a bunch, buddy. Hmm. Well, you guys, I think I'm gonna keep eating my supper here. Uh, once I'm done eating Smokies, I got some fruit I'm gonna chow down on, and then I'm gonna start making up my bed and get the dog's bed all set up for them. Sit by the fire for a few more hours. Right now it's, hey buddy, right now it's only about 7 o'clock or so, but it's starting to get dark here. Now I had to turn on the, the fancy light there so we can see everything. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna sit back and relax with the dogs for a few hours just kind of listen to the silence really and the crackle of the fire enjoy this beautiful weather that we got uh, hopefully this is kind of the start of spring but I'm pretty doubtful about that usually this time of year it's still kind of minus 20 to minus 40 so uh, today getting up to like plus 6 I think is what I've seen uh, it's we're gonna take it as it is and we're going to enjoy it while it's here because <laughs> I know for sure that it's not gonna last too much longer usually if we have a warm February we'll have a cold March and then a, a wet April kind of a thing and then hopefully come May things will be nice and and dry and we're able to get out hunt bears until then, we just take it as it is, live day by day, <laughs> try not to let your dog steal your smokies, and uh, enjoy what we have around us. But anyways guys, I'm going to get back to eating my supper here, and uh, yeah, just hang out with the pups. That's my buddy, hey, that's my buddy. Well, the fire's gone out now, and uh, I'm getting ready for bed here now. I got Rocky laying beside me here. He's cuddling up. Daisy, she's running around taking a leak or something, but she'll be back. We've been hanging out on the bed here for quite a while, and uh, now it's time for bed. Where's Rocky boy? Hi, friend. <laughs> I think uh, this is his first night sleeping under the stars so uh yeah we'll give it a go see how he does hopefully in the morning when i wake up while the dogs are still here with me <laughs> if not they won't be far anyways guys we're uh, gonna call her a night here now and get some sleep we'll see you guys in the morning well good morning everyone well we made her through the night <laughs> Well, I had one little interruption about three this morning. There's a moose that kind of came through. And the dogs were barking and running around and stuff. But caught them all back and got back to bed anyways. But, uh, yeah, beautiful night, beautiful morning. Didn't get too cold. Even right now, I think it's, I don't know, maybe minus five or so. So it's, uh, it's actually not too bad. Basically now what we're going to be doing is uh, just slowly packing up, heading to the truck, and then uh, going to be making our way home. So guys, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you hit the little thumbs up button down there in the corner. Uh, leave us a comment or two. Let us know if you're going to head out camping yourself. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Catch you on the next one.